All right, this demo is for all you spreadsheet nerds out there. About a year and a half ago, I showed a demo on how to incorporate OpenAI APIs inside of Google Sheets, and it went insanely viral. It was probably one of my most viewed posts in AI in 2023. So now that it's 2025, I figured I would show you a much easier way of doing that inside of Google Sheets using Google Gemini. Okay, so we've got a spreadsheet, and this is gonna be a very easy example, but we have a spreadsheet about art pieces that I'm putting together, and we have color of the art piece, height of the art piece in inches, and a description of the art piece. Obviously, I'm an incredible artist. Now, inside of Google Workspace, as long as you allow it in your workspace, you just type in equals, which is how you would call any function, right? Like subtotal, substitute, whatever. But instead of using some product or something, you are instead going to do equals AI. Equals AI. Couldn't be any easier. Equals AI. And then if you open the parentheses, you're going to have two different arguments or variables that you can put in. The first is the literal instructions that you're giving it, i.e. the prompt. And the second is the range. Now, I'm going to show you what I think works actually better than that. But if I say like, write me an Instagram caption to advertise this art piece. Okay. And then I give it the range of these three columns. You would assume that it can look at that range. What I have found, sorry. And then once you hit enter, you do have to highlight it because it doesn't run it on its own. Once you highlight it, click this generate and insert. If you're dealing with 150 rows or something, always start with just the first row. You need to see if it works. You need to see if it behaves the way that you're expecting prior to expanding it to 150 queries. Okay, so check out this rainbow turtle with six legs. So it wrote it. It was very, very boring. One of the most boring things. So write me an Instagram caption to advertise this art piece. Uh, Use extremely, extremely flowery language. Make it romantic sounding and drop in at least one Shakespeare reference. Okay. So because now I hit enter and it uh, slashed it in blue, that means that, hey, this caption that we're showing here, this is actually out of date. Do you want us to, to regenerate and insert? Sure. So I hit generate, insert, behold, a cerulean, da 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 So that worked. I have now ran this a couple times and sometimes the range selection doesn't work. And so I want to show you a slightly different way of doing it. But again, we're going to say refresh and insert. It's going to expand it to the next two. Now, it's showing behold both all three times. Fine. It does sound pretty different across the board. If music be the food of love, play on. Love that. Pretty sure it's Twelfth Night. Okay. So we can also do like translation equals AI. And then I say translate this into Spanish. And then I can just select the previous caption that was already generated with AI. I do that same generate and insert. Again, I'm only, only, only testing it on one. And then I go, I go, great, Tortuga, that means turtle in Spanish, perfect. I expand it to the next two rows, refresh, insert. And so now we have it for all three. Now, what I was hoping to happen, happened, which is that every so often, because I have no idea what model this is using, and to my knowledge, the documentation does not say what model is being used in the back end. It's got to be some tiny, tiny model because people are using this for free. So you can imagine that Gemini is not going to let you run something across a thousand rows if it's a really expensive model. So it has to be some tiny, tiny model. It might even be a previous you know, family of models. Maybe it's not even Gemini 2.5 or Gemini 2. Maybe it's 1.5 or whatever came before that. So here is what we can do. You can, first of all, just hit refresh and insert and that will fix it. 
There's also one other thing that I've seen that works better, especially when you have a bunch of different rows. So I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. And in order to do that, I'm actually gonna insert a new column. Now, what I have found in this error is that it's a lot of range issues. Whenever I point it to like one cell with the exception of what just happened now, uh, it usually works. It's when it's across a range that it can kind of fail. Also, I have learned whether or not this is true, but at least in my couple, you know, tests, when you set up headers, when those headers have this filter turned on for whatever reason, it just seems to work better. The like sort and filter, which you can enable with this little button right here. So what we are going to add in, which is not required, it's only if this caption thing fails, is that I'm gonna do concatenation. I'm going to basically take these three columns and rewrite them into a concatenated paragraph. Concatenation just means smushing, okay? It's like a portmanteau, it's it's A plus B equals AB or whatever. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into ChatGPT and ask for a formula that'll concatenate this. So I'm looking at color in A, height in B, object in C. So let's see what that looks like. All right, we are inside now ChatGPT, and I'm gonna say I am writing a new Google Sheet formula. Please write it for me, whatever. I could have said that a lot better. And then the actual thing that I want is in column D, write the following string, sentence, whatever, it'll understand. Um, I am creating an incredible new art piece. The color of this art piece is A2, because A1 was the title. So the, ty the color of this art piece is A2. Um, the height of this art piece in inches is B2, and the description is C2. It is my best work yet. Okay, I hit enter. It is going to give me this like text join thing that would have been incredibly annoying uh, to write. This, um, like the simpler version of concatenation, this is what I would have used if I had written it on my own. So I'm actually gonna use this second one. So I copied it, we're gonna go back here. I'm gonna paste it in to this and you can see it's using A2 as a variable and it is using the info in A2 to complete it. So if I were to wrap this, you can see that it's pulling in the 109, the rainbow with six legs, it's my best work yet. If I then extend it to all others and because it's not AI, it'll just automatically do it. I don't have to hit generate and insert, it'll fill that out. Then I can now go in to future, uh, to future, columns that I want to set up. Why is this not wrapping? There we go. To future columns that I want to set up and I can now point it at this column instead of highlighting the range. So let's just hide these two for now because we've already shown what that looks like. And instead I'm going to use a new AI caption equals AI. Super, super easy. And then I'm going to say, convert this uh, description into a robot sounding description. I am sending an email as if a as if I am a robot. You should be inspired by the Terminator. Uh, you speak exactly how you think the Terminator would speak, be as creative as possible. And I'm gonna add, you do not have to be concise. The reason I'm doing this, again, in my testing to be concise, is that um, whatever model this is, because I believe that it is this small, crazy, lightweight, maybe an older model, the system prompt for it, I think says something like, be really short <laughs> so that it uses fewer tokens so that it is cheaper for Google. 
It's a theory. But instead of pointing it to a range, I'm just going to point it to a cell. I'm going to point it at D2. And again, I'm going to hit enter. It's going to do that blue thing. I'm going to say generate and insert. And hopefully it is awesome and Terminator E. And sure, I guess that that's how a robot would speak. If I am really emotional and having a bad day, you must sound like this. And it goes blue again. We regenerate an insert. Uh, it didn't really sound any different. So it's not, it's not the best model. Go out of your way on tone. Be as long as possible. Let's just see if we can get anything better. Okay, way better. Even though it just kind of loops on itself, which is actually terrible. Let's see. Okay, the description. Okay, at least we got something with like six appendages. I can say da da da. Uh, be as creative as possible. You don't have to be concise, but be sure not to repeat yourself and don't uh, mention the art stats more than once. And let's see how we do. Great. I could then say, uh, you know, turn this into an email, whatever. I'm going to extend this here. Boom. And then I just want to show one other. See, look. I have emotion. Da, 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 da. I'm creating this new art piece. This one got lame. So let's regenerate this one. Did I hit it? No. See, it's just like, it's not, it's not perfect. AI is not perfect. And for whatever reason, this just doesn't feel like giving me any more oomph. Okay. So we're just going to hide this one. What I want to show one more is that what a lot of people are using this for is like summarizing reviews, right? Or like classification or sentiment analysis or whatever. So as you can see, this is an animal, a turtle. This is a chair. This is a lightning rod. Is this an animal? We're just going to see if we can set up a little classification thing. And we're going to go equals AI. If this is an, you know, animal, please insert the word animal into this column. If this is not an animal, oh my God, do I, how many times do I write the word email? Um, if this is not an animal, insert the word, no, great. If we then point it at the object, the hope, and we're going to close the parentheses, the hope is that it gets the word animal and it writes the word animal. Perfect. And if we extend to here, the hope is that they all write no, no, no. Perfect. You can imagine that you get 500 customer reviews on your brand new t-shirt that you put out there and you want to know collectively are these reviews positive or negative especially if it's things like unstructured text right i didn't have to say find you know do a v lookup and search for words turtle dog cat giraffe elephant leopard whatever and go from there i just said is this generally an animal? And because it's LLM based, it's going to look at the words here and it's going to pull out turtle and it knows because of the embedding space of turtle versus all these other animals that those are really related and it's related to the word animal. And so it's able to label that as animal. This is an easy, easy way to add a little bit of AI into your spreadsheets. Again, a couple tips that I just want to leave you with. Make sure that the headers are incredibly clear. Make sure that you test with just one row before expanding it to several. Make sure to iterate on the prompt if that first row or if multiple rows are not giving you what you need. Try out the refresh button, even though it didn't work all the time, give it a try. And the last piece is especially if things like range are failing, then switch to ChatGPT just to be able to grab this Google Sheet formula and set up one column that concatenates your entire range into one big paragraph of context. I hope that was helpful. 
I hope that you have more AI in your spreadsheets and that you get to supercharge more and more of your workflows. Thanks so much.